Happy Mother's Day, Gaia. Just a little bit of garden tour fun to honor this great Mother Earth. That's my Darrow blueberry. And I'm so fun watching the bees coming onto these peony buds that are oozing nectar would be my guess. And what I'm doing here, I've got my collards that are clearly bolting and flowering. And I'm going to leave them for a couple more days. I'm harvesting uh, all the rest of the greens right now. Uh, and then I will pull the plants out because look behind. I've got my snow peas coming up. Got their cages. The uh, dead branch on that Chandler blueberry is because I learned a big lesson, which is don't mess around the blueberries when they're starting to blossom out and have those delicate ends. My mend with the masking tape didn't quite work on this go, but that has worked I can't tell you how many times. So the bees are loving these colored flowers. And let's see, heading up, we've got, uh, this is Magic Carpet Spirea, which will have lovely pink flowers that you can see are starting to come on, not even opening, but then there's Blue Crop Blueberry and a very happy bee right there, if you can see him. I'm so excited because I have just received 14 mason bee houses, nesting blocks, that are empty, and I am putting them out um, in different spots around the yard and property. Lovely Iris, thank you so much. And so happy this year that the wild strawberries have really taken over in the pathways. And I'm just averting stepping on as many of them as possible. There are a few little stepping spots. Got some kale, sorry, some uh, beet greens there. And a beautiful lady fern, it's a volunteer. Some stunning plantain. And a potato volunteer there in that bed. And then over here as well. My thyme, which is that very brown looking mass. I thought she was coming back, but it doesn't look promising. So I'll be moving these chards, actually gathering them. Uh, leaving that little volunteer kale and some of the small, small chards. But these ones that are bolting, they just got so fried yesterday in the hot weather. It was over 85 here yesterday. Some more fun is that I have, you can see a little sprout coming up there and more of the same which is some escarole that I had in this bed. So it just seeded itself and I'm just gonna let them happily grow and thrive. And then more of these great wild strawberries. And the raspberries looking a little droopy again from that heat, but the fragrance over here, as I get to these, lilacs is just magnificent. It's so heady with this heat and beautiful, not to mention that. And I noticed that the bird waterer that's suspended here really has to get filled up and cleaned out. So I'm going to point out to you here, there, right on top of the downspout is one of the mason bee nesting boxes. They were coming into the 
bees, the mason bees, they were coming into my office. <laughs> I was getting them coming in, just flying in. I was like, what? I didn't know what they were. It looked like they were flies. I'm just learning more and more about mason bees. But they, uh, so I take them outside, put them in the glass, get them outside. And then I was talking with a brilliant friend of mine, Susie, who's a wildlife biologist, and learning about them to learn to ID them. Sidebar, here's the Jerusalem artichokes coming up happy. And then swift up. Then there's another Mason Bee nesting house box that I put right by my office window. Because what happened, they were coming in to and trying to make homes in my weep holes of my window. They're big enough for them to get in. Looks like a spider's there right now. And so that was how they were getting in. So crazy and cool because it led me to getting these houses and setting up an area, spaces for them to nest in. Another thing I need to do is, not very exciting views right here, but grab some of these beautiful lilacs again. Um, going to make sure and put some pans out with water and some soil so that they have mud. They need mud, the mason bees do, in order to uh, plant their eggs and make their homes in those uh, holes inside the nesting block. You can see, you can see the drilled holes up there. So, that's the little tour, and it's a beautiful, beautiful day here. Absolutely gorgeous. Such a great day. The poor pink dogwood, though, got completely fried in the 87 degree weather yesterday. Not expecting it. Whoa! Not expecting it at all. There's another glory here, and that's one of the first bloomers in my garden is this Spanish lavender. And the bees love it. Look at this. We call it the orange budded bees. I don't know what variety they are yet. I have to get that looked up. But beautiful, beautiful Spanish lavender. And then the rosemary blooming too. It's about done blooming, but it is very, very happy. So that's the tour, and that's the front yard in a bit. Uh, actually, a little bit more. We have the, these are the snowdrops that I love so much that start flowering in February-ish when nothing else is happening. And then we've got garlic big garlic coming up that'll be harvestable this year it's their second year and then artichoke and a lily a few of my lilies aren't up hmm. another artichoke happy happy enjoy this glorious beautiful day honor mother earth she is our first mother. Be kind to yourself, to one another, and grow some of your own food whenever possible. It's a delight. You can help create habitat. Get yourself outside to tend. And just getting outside is healing not only for you but also for the earth when you're outside sing sing to the earth sing to the trees sing to the plants and don't give me the I can't sing business we all have a voice hum 
do whatever you have within to pull out and give to the Mother Earth. She appreciates your presence, your love, and your caring. <laughs>